just finished a conversation with a lady called Bethany Hamilton, who at the age of 13 became the most famous surfer in the world when she lost her arm in a shark attack while surfing in Hawaii. A month later, she got back in the water and uh, went on to become a world champion surfer and has won many championships and many national championships since then. She's an amazing, inspirational young woman. Her Netflix documentary called Unstoppable, you should give that a look, is so inspiring to watch. And she now uses her life, she still serves competitively, and she now feels called to have a voice, especially to young people around the world who are also overcoming odds in their life to metaphorically get back in the water themselves, as it were, whatever that means for them, to, to continue to be strong, to go for their dreams, to overcome all odds that are against them, which she so proved possible through her life. You're going to love this interview. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for listening to this podcast with Paul Scanlon. Just before we get started on this episode, some of you have reached out to us in the past about your interest in partnering with Paul financially. You have wanted to show your appreciation and support for his investment into both yours and other people's lives. We're so grateful for anyone who wishes to do that. And if it is something you might be interested in, you can find out more at paulscanlon.com forward slash partner dash Paul. And there'll also be the links in the notes. Thank you for listening and enjoy this episode. Any hidden blessings, Bethany, of the pandemic for you and your family, do you think? Things you've loved and enjoyed and thought, wow, I don't want this to end kind of thing. Well, yeah, I mean, there's always the silver lining. Um, I see just like the quality time we've had and just spending time at home has been really nice. But um, it's definitely been a mind battle for sure. Um, Just seeing like the chaos of our country and the world and just feeling the kind of effects of everything on um, the world as a whole, especially um, here in Hawaii, I think. We're only just, we're not even close to seeing the repercussion of everything because everyone here relies on tourism. So if that doesn't come back up in the next couple of years, that will be really hard on a lot of people. So, but yeah, overall, we're just loving our time as a family and um, just kind of reevaluating life and what's the most important things to us and kind of getting our goals and priorities very clear. (laughs) I saw you doing some baking or cooking in your kitchen on your Instagram. Is that a new thing or have you always done that? No, we've always loved cooking and I'm, I'm very passionate about living healthy. So naturally you kind of got to own up the kitchen to do that. So it's been fun to just encourage people, I think, and um, just kind of put some more positive stuff out there as far as um, just with everyone being stuck at home around the world and around the country. We have an Hawaiian friend in San Diego and she introduced all things Hawaii when we met them years ago with hula dancing and then the Kalua pig. Yeah. (laughs) I would die for that. It was the best, best ever stuff I ate. It was unbelievable. Yeah, a good local meal is definitely um, one of a kind. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Listen, Bethany, a lot of my listeners, uh, of course, are European and, and to the East. I know you've surfed quite a bit in Indonesia. Thousands of my listeners are in Indonesia. Um, but I'm, I'm sure most people are familiar with the story of your background and the shark attack at 13 and so on. Bring us a little bit up to date with um, your story, your backstory to where you are now, what you're now doing, because I know you're involved in this online personal development stuff now, which looks fantastic. So tell us a little bit about, I know it's several years we're spanning here, but give us a little bit of background of, because you started surfing really young, right? Yeah, I started surfing um, when I was like a toddler. I think my parents had me on a surfboard before I could walk. And I really developed the passion on my own, um, very deep as at a young age. And this would always probably be begging my parents to go to the beach. And you could say the ocean was my playground instead of an actual playground. Yeah, yeah. And so as that love developed, I also kind of had a natural competitiveness to me. I think having two older brothers spurred that on a bit and just loving that feeling. I love that feeling of pushing myself to be my best. And so that kind of draw drew me to um, competitive surfing, which I was really great at. I was kind of the one to beat in my age bracket as a young girl. 
And so when I lost my arm um, to the shark at the age of 13, it kind of felt like my life had come to a halt and was flipped yeah. upside down and I didn't know right. what my future held. And I think a lot of us can relate to that um, specifically right now. And But all of us go through different times in our life where things just kind of get flipped upside down and it can feel really trying and challenging. And I would say the few things that kind of kept me initially moving forward was um, just having a grateful mindset. I was really grateful to be alive. I could have very well died that day, and but I believe God had plans for my life and um, kind of kept me alive for a reason. And I kind of just trusted God in that time and moved forward with like, wow, the fact that I'm breathing is a gift. And then I also have this willingness to just try, like be willing to try, like figure out life with one arm. I didn't look at myself and think like, oh gosh, I have one arm, like I can't do anything. I just like kind of move forward with like, what can I do? Like, how can I do things differently? And just move forward with that mindset of adaptability. And that was a huge advocate for me as well. That sense that you felt, I mean, you went back to the water quite soon after this, didn't you? Like what was yeah, the I was back in the water less than a month later, and wow. I was just on a mish. And I think it just took like a little hint of hope. Like I had a conversation with a guy by the name of Mike Coots, and he learned how to surf with one leg. He was also a shark attack oh. survivor, and he came to the hospital and said, "Like, hey Bethany, I think you can surf with one arm." I was paddling around this morning, and I popped up and. Um, so I think it just took that little reminder of like hope and the, the small chance that like, maybe you can Bethany. (laughs) And then, so once I popped up on my first, my third wave I caught, I paddled, I popped up and rode it all the way to the beach. And from there it was kind of like, no stopping me now. (laughs) So no, no massive, um, balance issues that, that meant you couldn't continue or was the balancing discovery quite a while when you started surfing again yeah i think it took a couple of years to kind of adapt to this new body and it was like i had the the foundation of understanding the ocean and understanding waves which is half the battle in surfing right. and i already knew how to surf but now i was just relearning how to do it differently with one arm and so yeah, balance was an issue, um, just having enough paddling speed to catch waves and kind of just different things like how I'd use my body on a wave. Um, so it took took some time and, and kind of determination and adaptability. And another advocate of mine, I think, was just my willingness to be taught and to learn. And I always kind of chose to surround myself with people to encourage me or coach me and kind of push me in the direction and be a, another set of eyes to like look in on my situation and you know keep nudging me forward. I think a lot of people listening will be amazed, one, that you went back and two, what you did with battling the fear, was fear a big thing for you going back in the ocean in terms of you know being attacked again or your fear about that possibility? How did you manage that? Yeah, I definitely had a bit of fear. And I think part of that fear was actually just not being able to surf or not being able to do what I love to do, but also sharks. Um, But I also kind of looked at the situation with the sense that like, it's so rare of a thing to happen. And it's kind of like getting in the car every day and just being like extremely fearful of getting in a wreck. It's just, you know, it happens, but it's not necessarily like how you approach getting into a car, right? So for me, it was like, I'm not going to approach the ocean every day with the fear of that. And I know some people struggle with that. So I think for me, like just putting my focus on, on catching waves and staying busy and surfing with friends helped a lot. And over time, that fear kind of dissolved and, um, yeah, even to this day, I would say I'm pretty normal, like, unless the water gets really murky and dirty and, like, kind of just that eerie feeling. I'm not usually, like, dwelling on sharks in the ocean. And I think they are actually really beautiful creatures, and they're part of the 
ecosystem. They're an essential part of the ecosystem. And so there's a beauty to them in my mind. Your determination and drive, you know, when you talk about your awareness on the Unstoppable Netflix documentary, the awareness that from eight, you kind of felt even from that age, you wanted to be a competitive surfer at eight. Um, that drive and determination you have had since childhood that I still pick up from you now, where does that come from? Oh, gosh, I know. Even myself, I'm like, gosh, I was a really determined young girl. And it wasn't just like I'm having fun and I want to like just do my best, but it was a genuine determination to become one of the best. And, you know, I honestly, I can't say, but I you know, one thing I would say is like, I believe that when we have our focus um, on things that we're passionate about and things that bring us joy and kind of get us fired up to like work hard and right. push through pain points, um, you know, because surfing is actually like a really challenging sport. Like the ocean can be so uh, discouraging at times and just like frustrating and, and challenging. So yeah. you you know, it takes resilience to stick with it and be out there. And so I think a lot of what taught me that was just being in the ocean at a young, young age. And, you know, definitely my faith in God, too, kind of kept me grounded and just wanting to um, be my best in everything that I did. Um, and so when, when things got hard, that passion and determination didn't just dissolve, it just may be adopted. But you're still very competitive, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty competitive. Um, it's been an interesting year, because um, in 2019, I um, set my sights to like go 100% back into competitive surfing, where it, bef like the previous years, I had just been kind of like dabbling here and there, still doing some events, but not like having full focus. And for those that don't know, I'm also a mother of two young boys and, and a wife. So I thankfully I had the support of my husband and my family kind of just went along for the ride and supporting me and cheering me on. And then um, towards the end of 2019, I actually broke my elbow. So I had no elbow, no arm. <laughs> the one and only oh. arm was out of out of commission but yeah I, just kept, I was skateboarding <laughs> and i fell on the cement the cement is not as nice as the ocean but so that was a major setback but i kind of oh. just put my focus into preparing my body regardless and my mind for the competitive season and then um basically come march the world was kind of coming to a halt with all the um, coronavirus stuff. So right. I think the rest of the year is going to be canceled. So we're kind of just feeling our way through the year and not kind of setting our sights too, too clear at this point, but um, just putting our focus on the things we can do, like encourage people. And I have my online course, which it brings me a lot of joy and passion to wake up. Yeah, tell us a bit about that, Bethany, your online course. Yeah, it's called, so I guess I've kind of been in this space of inspiration for a long time, and um, I embraced that, but I didn't feel like I was fully giving back with that space. Like, it was more of just, like, being an inspiration, but I wanted to do more and equip people and share the tools and things I've learned right. along the way. Yeah, yeah. So my husband and I and a team of people that are like-minded, um, we work together to create an online course that is a year-long course, and it's called The Unstoppable Life, and kind of encouraging people to overcome their tough times, to right. share the tools that have equipped me to carry myself with the resilience and determination and things like you know, we start the year with slowing ourselves down. Um, you know, so many people are so on the go, go, go that when things get hard, they're so busy that they don't have the time to evaluate the pain right. that they're suffering from and the time to kind of check in with themselves and you know, is this the life they're wanting to live? And so just kind of like creating a space of awareness and 
um, a space to heal and grow and cha be challenged and to um, kind of think about what they want for their lives and then move forward with like an unstoppable mindset. So it's That's been great. really, really fun. <laughs> That's very cool. Now you've been in the public eye, Bethany, obviously since two or three. Um, how has your relationship with all that unfolded, you know, since then? I mean, obviously you became famous and known in a way that you maybe didn't want to be or didn't expect. It was thrust upon you. How did you manage all that in your teens and how do you cope with it all now? Yeah, in my teen years, it was so hard and yeah. I didn't embrace it. I didn't like it. <laughs> I think being an a island girl, I just grew up very simple. I didn't like, it wasn't something I ever thought could see myself seeking after. And, yeah. um, you know, I like the simplicity of just getting in and out of the ocean and going to school and hanging with my friends. And so being so young and all of a sudden thrust into the spotlight was a major challenge. Um, and I think part of what kept me grounded through all that was for sure my faith in God, um, just being in the ocean, still having the acceptance and like the, the friendships that I had that like just embraced me as I was and like would put me in my place or not help me when they didn't think I needed help. <laughs> um, things like that. And yeah, as I got older, I just really saw the beauty in storytelling. So I shared my life through my book, Soul Surfer, and that was made into a film. And I authored a few other books that um, were just things of encouragement to people. And just hearing some of the stories of like, especially young people, I'd say my, my sweet spot is for young people. And there's a lot of young people that suffer so much at such young ages now that being able to hear the kind of testimonies of like they heard my story and that like brought them light and hope in their dark hour. And so I, that kind of propelled me to keep sharing my story. And eventually that led to my documentary, Unstoppable, um, which is now in most places around the world on um, iTunes and some places in Netflix. So it's just been like really cool to be able to you know, I see, you know, when you wake up every day and not having your whole life centered around yourself, mm. like I think it brings balance. And so that's another part of my online course is like being a blessing to other people and encouraging people to make that a part of their life. Of the things that you do, the range of things that you do, is this, what do you love the most about what you do? Do you love public speaking? Do you love writing? Um, do you love doing stuff to camera? Is there a sweet spot for you in the range of things that you do? I would say I like mothering. <laughs> really? There you go. Yeah. Being a mother is definitely my greatest joy at this point. Um, and then behind that, like besides surfing, um, I just, I love motivational speaking, especially to young people. And so just being able to remind them that they can overcome their challenges in life. Um, is really fun and you know you can leave that knowing that someone's gonna take a nugget of encouragement that day so and are you speaking to young people from all kinds of walks of life in the in the groups that you speak to are you into schools or is camps or who are these people yeah it's a variety like kind of a lot of different opportunities come my way from speaking to schools conferences um people of all different backgrounds. So kind of just keeps me on my toes. Um, sometimes I'm even speaking to corporate businesses with older people. Yeah, I really enjoy it all, but definitely the young people um, gets me really stoked. You know, public speaking communication is my big thing, but I wonder, um, do you enjoy it? Do you find it challenging uh, continually? Uh, do you get scared? Do you get nervous? <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's very challenging. So maybe that's partially what draws me to it. Um, I've actually been getting coaching the last couple of months and I'll continue working with my coach over the next year and um, just trying to get better at it and just finding ways to draw people in and, and leave um, long lasting kind of memory points for them. Um, but yeah, I think for the most part, I'm not too nervous. And I'll probably get more nervous in small groups. It's the bigger groups that are easier. Yeah. But I did speak at the National Prayer Breakfast here in the US and 
That wow. was pretty overwhelming speaking to politicians yeah. all over the right. world. Um, thankfully, my husband was there to kind of back me up and support me and kind of cheer me on. That's great. What is your favorite place in the world to surf? Do you have one? And why? Well, I would say Hawaii for sure. Really? That's where I was born and raised. Um, some of the best waves in the world are out here. Um, but I've also enjoyed Indonesia a lot. Um, I've probably spent more time in Indonesia than any other country um, wow. besides kind of like there in Australia are probably my top two international countries that I've spent time in. And they're just amazing waves there. So it's all is, there a specific, is there a specific coastal area in Indonesia where there's great waves? Um, honestly, the whole country is just loaded wow. with waves. Um, yeah, it's amazing. Um, most Indonesians are very familiar with surfers because there's just, it's like crawling with surfers everywhere. So, but I love the Mento, Mentawi Islands. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. And then Bali and um, yes. I've been to an island called Roti. I've been kind of all over. So that's been like probably one of my bigger adventure countries. <laughs> And what's the oldest surf you've ever seen? Oldest. Oldest? Oh, gosh. Ooh. I don't oh, know. Is this, but there's... Is, this, is this age limited? Like, can you surf till your 90s or what? Um, I don't know if I've seen... I've definitely seen an 80-year-old surfing. Really? Um, I think if you take care of your body and, like, nutritionally and posturally and strength-wise, you could probably keep it going pretty late. <laughs> What is the next thing that you're working on? Upcoming projects and so on? Um, I'm just actually continually developing my online course. I want to give as much tools and resources that I can through that. So that's kind of a continual project that I'm really excited about. And other than that, um, yeah, just kind of raising the family and kind of seeing what the world does and, and figuring itself out and see once things kind of mellow down and then we'll kind of keep pursuing things as we can. Is there a normal, is there such thing as a normal day for you at the moment or not? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, at home, we're definitely having a pretty normal life. Um, just, we do a lot of our work online, so we're staying busy here at home, but also getting to the beach and still surfing a lot and just enjoying the family. And um, yeah, I'd say it's, it's, um, I'm thankful for where our life is at right now. Now the faith that you have, Bethany, uh, has that come from your upbringing, your, your family who are Christians and so on? Yeah, I grew up a Christian and um, ever since I was a young girl, I think I had a childlike faith and it was just really amazing when I did lose my arm. I would say I had a kind of odd sense of peace that it was going to be okay. And wow. I just believe that God had me in the palm of his hand. And yeah, I don't even like part of me now doesn't even fully understand how I was so at peace with the whole situation. So the only thing I can attribute it to is God and, and just knowing that um, his grace and love for me was there yesterday, that day, and forever. I think overcoming what you overcame and speaking to young people who see that is such an inspiration to young people, as you said, especially now that are going through all kinds of mental health issues, yeah. suicidal issues. He's hugely out of control in the country here in the United Kingdom. Only two years ago, our government appointed a minister of suicide because the suicide stats were so huge, especially wow. amongst young people. Wow, that's really, really devastating. Um, yeah, it's actually really common out here in Hawaii too. There's a lot of young people taking their lives. And um, yeah, I think there's ways we can approach life differently, um, but having the resources to know that um, I think we need to start sharing that more out publicly and, you know, providing kids with proper nutrition, lots of exercise, um, less time on screens, um, you know, get them working hard. Young boys need to work hard. They need to move their body. They need to be challenged and they need to be given things to work towards. So I think that's a, 
a major thing lacking in society now. Um, so yeah, I actually am hoping to develop my online course um, in different ways. So my husband and I would work together to create a young boys mentorship. And then we would also right. work together to create a young woman. So like more designated towards young women and young boys and kind of like separate them in a way that like really speaks to the young ones, um, depending on if they're a boy or girl. And yeah, the sky's the limit with ways we can encourage people. And I think just communicating in a way that's uplifting and brings the best out of people um, is so yeah. important. And creating a space of like, safety but also like challenge and to propel them to you know keep moving forward and you know i think of right now like everything was shut down for months and months and there was a few suicides here in, in Kauai where i live and i was just like no mm -hmm. people need to be working they need to be pushing towards something right. so you can right, only right. stay in lockdown for so long yeah yeah for sure um what is your um, future now you're going to go back into surfing you said next year probably when it starts again yeah we're gonna see um kind of what's gonna happen because i the surf culture was actually doing really bad prior to oh. um all this so i think it's gonna really crash over the next few years so we'll just kind of see what happens um you know, I'm always kind of training myself and being prepared for whatever may come my way. Um, so naturally, I'm just continually pushing myself. So if I decide to go back into that direction, then I'll be ready. But if not, um, there's so many opportunities to keep pushing in life and keep moving forward. So um, I think I'll be happy regardless of what space I put my focus in. And who have been mentors to you, Bethany? Yeah, um, you know, my mom actually has been really amazing. She's always sharing wisdom, of, nuggets of wisdom with me. Like just yesterday, she reminded me that like the mercies of God are new every day and to not live in our past, but to move forward and forgive ourselves or those around, around us who have hurt us. I think unforgiveness can really eat away at our life. And just hearing that from my mom was like really just encouraging with all that's going on to not let the past hold us back from moving forward towards our future and towards the good and beautiful things in life. Yeah, I'm a big believer in um, finding guides and voices, not necessarily in a relationship um, with one-on-one, -on -one, but in you know, books and reading, like your online course, now yes. becomes a possible mentorship voice to possibly millions of people in a way that, you know, not long since it wasn't an option because you had to be face to face to a degree. Yes. Um, but the I, I'm constantly experience. reading. I'm like always have my face in a book. Like, yeah. it's weird. I feel like I'm educating myself more today than I ever have. And I'm yeah. enjoying it and like getting like just feeling passionate about growing myself and and continually learning so yeah that's cool I think we have to always like be teachable and be learning and growing um, and just kind of learn through different seasons of life um, where can people find you Bethany um, where can they go to you what are your social media I look I know your social media is fantastic I look at it all the time but where can people find you I'm um, at BethanyHamilton.com and then on social at Bethany Hamilton. So if you guys want to check me out, I'd be grateful. Yes, and your Netflix Unstoppable documentary is brilliant and the Soul Surfer book and the Unstoppable book are fantastic. I hope everybody takes a look at that stuff. It's brilliant. You are such Thank an inspiration you. to everyone. You really are. Thank you, Paul. Much love and aloha from here in Hawaii. Thank you. Take care. Thanks for your time again. Thank you for listening to this episode with Paul Scanlon on his podcast channel. Just a reminder that if it is of interest to you and you'd like to support Paul financially through what he does, please check out the show notes for where you can find out how to do that. And don't forget to subscribe, share, and write a review. Thank you.